So the final moment was going to be Chuck and Sarah riding off into the sunset together. And then they added six more episodes. With this bonus six, we got to really explore them being together and sort of the new challenges that kind of spy relationship can face with our everyday struggles, because it's super spies against the world. You know, it's not just super couple. We make a great team. John Casey is a man of few words, uh, mostly grunts. Huh? <sighs> Every grunt says a thousand words. They mock me, actually. They make fun of me all the time. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't write it. I just sort of grunt it. He can do small things that signify a lot for his character. Casey can be a bit of a regular guy, but he's always got to be Casey. The John Wayne, the Clint Eastwood. I can be very persuasive. This season, we've had a lot of fun with the idea of expanding his backstory. Well, Casey started out as pretty much this mysterious hard guy killer. And over the course of events, he's come to love and enjoy and embrace the relationships with Chuck and with Sarah. Proud of you. As close to normal way as, as a human could be expected to. You have to believe I would never hurt you. No, just forcibly kidnap me. His experience with learning about his family it really humanized Casey. And I think he doesn't know how to react to it. Well, he's got a daughter. Alex, I'm your father. Casey's got a daughter, he's got a woman that it was his fiance before he went off to war, who uh, he reconnects with, so that that's pretty big. He is so bottled up and so macho and warrior-like that it's fun to see when that cracks. And I think that's gonna really push his character into interesting new dimensions and see how he still retains his John Casey-ness while, while we begin to flesh out his humanity. Uh, you are joining the world of human beings, so proud of you, kudos for that. Do you know? Do you know? On three, we both say what we know. Okay. One, two, three. Chuck's up. Oh, oh my, my God, God, you know. We take each person into the spy world as it, it's a huge deal for us. Because we know that when we do that, we're changing the dynamic of the show. I can't talk to my best friend or my sister about anything in my life. I'm not a machine. Okay, I am a machine, but I'm also a person. Now he's a full-fledged spy and you know, people are finding out, everybody's kind of along for the ride. The Chuck and Morgan friendship was a big part of the show in the first season. And we felt last year as we expanded to mythology and, and all that, we got away from that dynamic a little bit. I'm firing you as my best friend. And the actors missed it. You know, they're buddies and they miss spending time together and they're really good together. And the only way you're really gonna be able to get Chuck and Morgan to share more screen time is if Morgan is part of the Chuck spy world. And I deserve to know what the, no, I demand to know what the hell's going on with you lately. Well, then Josh Gomez himself was like, what if I was like Alfred to his Batman? Chuck needs an Alfred. If he's Batman, he needs an Alfred. You know, if he's Bond, he needs a Q. He needs that guy he can talk to about his feelings, his girly feelings, as Casey would say. You know, uh, he gets to be part of his, his, his best friend's life again. His reaction to Chuck telling him he's a spy isn't that, how could you not tell me? You know, it's, it's more like, this is so exciting. We're gonna have so much fun. My best friend? is a spy? This is unbelievable, it's the best news I've ever heard! Holy smokes, it makes perfect sense! And it's like the spirit of the show. Chuck, you're officially rehired as my best friend. Great, that's good news, thanks. Morgan is fairly courageous. And through his loyalty and, and his heart, he kind of, you know, he's able to, to do these things. Time for me to be a hero. Yeah, I, I think it's super fun and to watch, especially that episode when Morgan finally finds out about the spy world and watching him walk into the castle for the first time and, you know, he's discovered this CIA base. It's so funny and I think that's... The audience especially really loves that stuff when the non-spy world comes into the spy world because it's almost like the Chuck journey all over again. You people are the disease and I'm the cure. I didn't give you any bullets. Are you kidding me? It's just great. It's cool. And even, so even if they are kind of, you know, passing, if Chuck is still on a mission or doing something and, and Morgan's not a part of it, it doesn't have that same, it feels like there's not that same strain of like, I know why he's doing it's like, go, go get him, tiger. I'm like the Mary Jane now to, to his, which is odd. Stop! Yeah, when Captain Awesome finds out that Chuck's a spy, he was excited, he was pumped up about it. And the more he saw Chuck as a spy, he wanted in on the action. This is badass. I mean, it gave him a good mirror of, how his life was a little boring. You're an adventure sports cardiologist. Whatever, man. I can do that in my sleep. You know, I need some real action, some real adrenaline. 
He basically got in on some of it and realized he was in over his head. Well, in the beginning of the season was essentially Ellie has the two most important men in her life lying to her, and she knows something's wrong. And then that just starts to really weigh on my husband. And he finally is just sick of the lies and, and, and just feels like we need to get as far away from Chuck and his hijinks and what's going on as possible. Africa. Africa. Sarah Lancaster is such a fantastic actress that we just, we needed to come up with a way to bring her into the show. I'm uh, Justin, camp security coordinator. And so we came up with this character, Justin, who's a member of the ring, and slowly over a period of so many episodes, begins to manipulate her. Well, that's the point. We're the CIA. Nothing's what it seems. Right this way. Okay. And to bring her father back into Chuck's life for the greater purpose of the ring. Dad, I thought that you left. The one person Chuck was always most worried about, the one person he always needed to protect and know was safe, was Ellie. And so her finding out, we thought, would really evolve their dynamic. The last five episodes, for me, have been so gratifying and so much fun. Ellie kicked Casey's ass with a frying pan this year. Ellie, wait! That was my first, like, big stunt that I was very happy about. I mean, she's a Bartowski, so she definitely has the, the genes to become pretty badass, you know? They've definitely been been running me ragged. The writers of the show, the actors in the show, we're all trying to just, you know, keep the story moving forward and keep the fans on, on their feet. The first season that we, we went to Comic-Con, I was truthfully like, who is going to show up? You know, no one knew what the show was, and we got there, and it was packed. Plus, showed our pilot at Comic-Con, and people went crazy. They saw Sarah and Casey in the body more. They kind of knew what the show was going to be like. They thought it was fun. It spoke to the geek side of the equation, but also had cool spy-fi action comedy stuff. And there was a standing ovation, and it was crazy, because as like a television writer, you're not used to that. We were a little, little misty-eyed. And uh, we had the sense of, oh, well, maybe people will respond to the show. There was enough, like, kind of buzz and hype to fill one of the smaller halls down in San Diego. But I think most of those people came to see Adam Baldwin. <laughs> and I think that we delivered enough for them in the first season where they go, yeah, this is a cool show that I like it. I'm going to stay with it. Chuck is one of them. I'm one of them. Josh is one of them. We we take our geekdom, <laughs> our geekdom, our geekiosity, our geekiness, we take it very seriously. I wear my nerd badge with honor. All the things that I think Chuck is very into. You know, when I got the job, I was like, this is totally a dream come true. I don't even have to act. Going out to Comic-Con is one of the most rewarding experiences. We see the reality of what our show does to people or how the show makes other people feel. You never hear the word awesome so much in your life. I mean, just being shouted. That's weird. It's like, I feel like I'm a beetle. That's the closest I'll ever get, I guess. It's so rewarding. It's the greatest thing ever because we're seeing why our show is so great and why it's lasted this long. It's built every year. And the last season that we went, like 6,000 people, and everyone's just rocking out. We had Jeffster perform. Fat Bottom Girls, and people said they've never seen a Comic-Con panel quite like this. The crowd went wild. It's a very intense bunch. It was really emotional to stand up on that stage at Comic-Con this year, knowing that they had such a big part in us coming back. Our fans were such a huge and integral part of our salvation, buying foot-long sandwiches at Subway. Like, who'd have thunk it? Buy a sandwich, save a show. It gives them a voice in a way, and I think that's a really good thing. For me, that's also been part of the evolution of the series as well, is um, as the show has gone on, having this really rabid and loyal fan base uh, that has fought for the show and stuck with the show. So now they weren't just fans, they were participants. I think at one point I genuinely wanted to cry. I mean, it, like even now I'm kind of feeling a little emotional. Uh, it, it was very, 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 very poignant. Very poignant. I couldn't have asked for a better show. I mean, I, I mean, I can't, it's so much fun. I don't know if there's another show that has more fun than we do, that's for sure. I met with Josh, you know, three, three and a half years ago. And just to go for an idea that I pitched to my wife as we were making the bed one morning, to actually turning it into a show with my friend, and then building this kind of giant family, which we've done here, it's, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Every time I try to think about what they're going to do, you know, the next season, the next season, or the season finale, it always excels my expectations. The show has really evolved into this, this family. It's not just about him being a spy. It's about the relationships that are happening around his spy life. 
I love the idea of taking Chuck and each season kind of like bringing him further into this spy world, you know, and how he changes and how that changes him. And like, how does that mirror all of us? I always wanted to maintain his heart and sense of humor. I think that's very important. Well, what's exciting is I think that we've, you know, paved the way for everyone to go anywhere. There's still so many great stories to tell of Chuck and his friends and this romance and what it's going to be like for Chuck and Sarah now that they're together and this new dawning revelations about Chuck's backstory. There's so many places for the show to go. Yes! Oh. We're shooting! An EPK! Kind of. <laughs> Wonder Home Video. It's going to be forever on a DVD. Blu-ray. Eventually just, you know, direct download. Whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was I talking about?